Okay, here we go, hour number three. I'm Jeff Rance. Glad you're along wherever you are all around the planet. And we get some emails from folks uh, over the years from oh, in places you'd never even believe. Wherever the Internet is, uh, you can pick us up. And if you just want to simply step into 23 years of radio history, the entire time our planet turned from one direction to another. It's all recorded for you in the archives at rentsradio.com. You can join for about for what, five bucks a month. That's it. it helps me a lot. It helps the uh, network an awful lot. And it will give you access to interviews and information that is uh, really timeless and priceless. And maybe in a 100 years or 200 years, an archaeologist study this Last period, the last, well, what would you call it? Convulsion, I guess, of our structured society. Uh, people will be studying these interviews and listening to people who spoke their truths. I don't have con artists on here. I don't have hustlers. I have remarkable people like my guest and friend, uh, Yoichi Shimatsu, the former editor of the Japan Times Newspaper, the weekend edition, uh, he's one of the world's bravest men, the bravest I've ever known. He's been back to Fukushima on foot, on bicycle, ten times trying to help the people there learn how to take care of themselves. Fortunately, he is bright enough to have been able to hold the radioactive damage at bay, and we hope to have him around for many, many more years. So, uh, hello, my friend. How are you? Well, thank you for that introduction. Yeah, I was also in the Japan Times Management Group. I was one of the leading editors. And, oh, uh, yeah. You know, it's not always a pleasant job. It's not a pleasant job to be in media. you got to make a lot of tough decisions. <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot of people who want to avoid trouble. And then you have advertisers, you know, big advertising agencies. That threaten to pull all their ads. Cause oh, and telev- television is the worst. I, yeah. I was a television yeah. anchorman. Mm-hmm producer and news director for 12 years Mm -hmm. and i i went through everything you're talking about and it is you're right it's 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 brutal it's rough yep yeah it's rough and uh of course the disadvantage of not having advertising is that you lack the money so (laughs) uh, and i see that you're sort of like on the low end of advertising there you know we're not seeing big national brands backing you or anything like that no, no and, and please do support. A lot of, you yeah. should have a lot of potential advertisers, but they're not going to step forward because no, they're, they're afraid. afraid. They're afraid. Yeah, they're afraid of course. They don't want. They don't want the Zionists to come after them and call them anti-Semitic exactly. and all that crap. Foot, just filthy lies. Uh, listen, let me let me say one thing, please. The product I have at uh, at Rents, you'll find it there. It's at the very top of the homepage. Uh, it says Jeff Rents urges you to take action now to start protecting you and your loved ones from the bioaccumulation of Mm -hmm. Fukushima radiation. I'm not kidding. I take this every day and have for years, and I credit it with my health. Thank God. It's the four most potent algaes on the planet put together after Fukushima, which saved hundreds of thousands of lives. You should take it every day. It's not very expensive at all. It's great. Great stuff. No, it makes sense. You know, that's sort of the difference in the death rate between Chernobyl, when people, where people do not get a lot of those, you know, uh, iodine replacement, iodine salt and all that, which doesn't anyway compensate. Right. Whereas in Japan, although we've gotten hit, hit with a larger crisis, people had already taken, you know, huge amount. We eat huge amounts of seaweed in our diet, and therefore uh, uh, people had greater iodine protection. So that dietary, what you're talking about there, dietary you know, use of algae, is uh, really vital to hold off, uh, not just not just uh, you know iodine, uh, radioactive iodine. No, no, no. It builds your it builds your entire immune system. Geez, do we lose him already? Ah, let's see. Doesn't sound like he's there. We'll get him back. Let's hope. Yochi Shimatsu, always victim of cutting off his cell phone service. They, they don't like him speaking the truth on this program. And that's the truth. The latest headlines for you, let's just start going through those. I was going to anyway. They're right at the top, center column in the news department at rents.com. Fukushima, uh, tremendous floods. 
uh, from a subtropical storm has dumped tons. You know, they never tell you how many tons. Tons of filtered what How dare they? They call it filtered radioactive water. So what if they were successful at removing one radioactive nuclide? They're over 200 easy in the water. So the other 229, no problem at all. But it's filtered. Uh, now here's a weird one. Now he may have eaten something that was had blue coloring in it. I don't know. A wild pig with bright blue flesh has been found in California. Now, this could be attributable to radioactivity impacting and growing in the favorite food of this wild pig, which was shot by some wild people who were going to eat it. That's pretty wild. Too wild for me. Um, All right, so there's that story there for you. Nearly 70,000 Fukushima evacuees are still stuck in temporary housing four and a half years later. You see the Japanese government waiting for them to die. It just is sickening. Horrible. They're ordering some people to move back into towns that should not be cleared for human habitation at all. Uh, They're going to get sick and die. Japan is slowly dying right now. Tokyo should be evacuated. We've been through that a hundred times. All the data is there. The black mold on the asphalt, it feeds on the petroleum base, collects radioactivity. He's back. Okay. Well, they did it again. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know what these cutoffs are about. We don't know. We don't know. We really don't know. We we can make a good guess, though. Right. Yeah, All well, right. you know, they're, you're, they're, you're subject to another harassment campaign right now, so maybe there's something to do with that. I you know? Listen, if they if they harass me anymore, they're going to kill me off. I, I'm very lucky to be alive, and I'm getting well, they, sick tried, of They've tried very hard. They, they have tried very hard. You somehow managed to come back. You're still there. So people should realize there is a risk, a heavy risk, for telling the truth. And uh, it's just the way it goes. You know, I just... You know, there's a risk to everything. A risk I worry every about you every day, uh, Yochi. Yeah, I, I do. Yeah, there is risk. There is risk from all sort, all, all directions, and so it just it's just a tough world we live in, and people want to live in a little bubble of their own uh, fantasy of security, yep. uh, which doesn't exist. You know, that bubble is just a pure. No, fantasy, it's a fictional. Even for the richest of people. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, anyway, now, uh, like floods. Like the bend where we have this exploding volcano, Mount Aso, the biggest volcano. Oh, the yes, I put the, the story the, up. The big volcano is blowing up. That's a bad sign, very bad sign for Japan. You know, that's a huge, one of the largest uh, active volcanoes in the world. There's probably about dozens and dozens smaller volcanoes in that range. It's a vast range. And the problem that uh, if it goes... The, the mountain is sort of uh, is near the junction of the two major trunk lines for electrical power, the Kyushu grid, the grid on the big, uh, the, you know, the southernmost island, the large, uh-huh. uh, large southernmost uh-huh. island in Japan. Uh, so it could conceivably cause a uh, just a general blackout in the whole area because there's like two huge power lines that like, pass through the city of Kumamoto, right. one, right. one right. Boita, the other one going north, sort of uh, on the uh, southwest axis. Access. And that basically is the power, conventional power, that feeds into the Sendai nuclear plant, the south of the Sendai nuclear plant, where there's two, uh, it, you know, that, that has been turned back on, ordered back on, and it's got two uh, Mitsubishi uh, pressurized water reactors there, which have been, in fact, uh, got a problem of leak, leakage, you know, that they're, that they're trying to cover up. So uh, power outage there will basically do the same thing as happened. At Fukushima, we'll cut off the cooling pumps, and we'll have another meltdown, which will basically finish off Japan. You know, uh, if, uh, you know uh, Fukushima is toward the north of the large island, yeah. and yeah. this one is the southernmost point of the uh, second largest island, or uh, third largest island. So basically, it would eliminate Japan Can't take as anymore. a you know, living nation of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They could, that would be the. Uh, well, they'd all be in Brazil. And only a maniac, of course, would ever think of turning it up. Uh, the, the notion of a national suicide. But mm-hmm. we have a suicidal prime minister in charge, and uh, no one dares in Japan 
you know, call him out for what he is, you know, uh, a man who's going to die soon was willing to bring down everybody with him. And, um, yeah. Uh, who knows what else he's doing. Well, as, as, you, as you know, and the, 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 the only good news for Japan is the agreement that I broke on this program between Japan and Brazil, where Brazil has offered as much land as Japan needs yeah. to relocate, period. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for a massive relocation on millions of people. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, in the heart of the jungle. Yeah, yeah. So this is the problem. You know, the, the reality is far worse than anyone is suggesting. Uh, you know, if this volcano blows, the uh, power line is yet. And this is uh, not ASO? Much. This thing is blowing ash. Pardon? This is Mount Asshole? Yeah, Mount Asshole. Mount Asshole, yeah. This is uh, uh, right off of Kumo, more than one of the major states. It's, and again, it's, this is the area that feeds conventional power yeah. into that nuclear plant. No nuclear plant can run without conventional power because you've got to keep all the other you know systems going. And you start, sure. up, you start a nuclear plant, you've got to have that. You have to have a lot of dedicated power. Nuclear industry is very inefficient. You know, it sucks up a lot of conventional power. So this notion that these, um, you know, uh, climate change theorists suggest that, oh, uh, you need nuclear to replace fossil fuel. That's total nonsense. You need fossil fuel to feed the nuclear. Yeah, I hate the term. I hate. I hate that term, fossil fuel, because it has nothing to do with fossils yeah. whatsoever. It's petroleum. Yeah. Well, especially gas is not fossil. Well, no, no none of it is. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So basically. The notion that, you know, uh, you know, most, most of the nuclear power goes to waste anyway. Anyway, while you're asleep, the plants are still running continuously. So, uh, you know, there's, there's vast risk, very little gain. And, uh, in the overall finance, financial picture of the, in terms, terms of investment, great for banks because they have the long-term 40-year contracts, yeah. basically, yeah. you know, lending they can do with the power. Yeah. So it, it's sort of a form of monopoly. And, uh, and then, which has slowed down all the renewable energy in Japan. Kyushu, in fact, year, uh, two years ago, they stopped all renewable, uh, new sources of renewable energy because they had been planning to restart nuclear. You know, they don't want renewables. They don't make as much profit off of that. And, uh, they certainly don't want you to, let's say, put the solar panels on your rooftop because they wouldn't collect any profit. They would have to, quite contrary, buy power from you. So, you know, the, it's to their advantage to maintain nuclear. It's purely a financial play, very corrupt and uh, corrupt politicians, bankers, and so on. Gee, a new theme, corrupt politicians, corrupt business. Yeah, it's the same, it's the same story about everything. I mean, every, you know, well, what you eat, you know, the air you breathe, the transport you take, yeah, it's all the same story. But in nuclear, it's especially dangerous because of high risk the large areas of the world. And the We're on borrowed time, Yoshi. We're on borrowed time. We, uh, well, it's terrible for Tokyo right now because, you know, that typhoon that hit, that's how the cause of all the images of the flooding north of Tokyo, actually was a direct hit on Tokyo. And I looked at the, um, um, the, the maps of that typhoon when it came in mm-hmm. uh, and barometric pressure. It, it came across right over the Japan Trench, which is highly radioactive. Uh, this is like two days and a day before hitting Tokyo area, the red hit on the Tokyo area conflict plane. What happened then, if you look at the barometric uh, figures, and there was a dramatic drop in barometric pressure over the Japan Trench, which means that the water there was very, very hot. It was very warm water, superheated water, which basically just lifted up into the air and drove that would made a powerful typhoon. Now, the problem is that water, the reason it's so hot, it's not just because of the summer temperatures uh, we have there, the late, uh, late summer, early autumn temperatures, but because of the radiation, that, that layer of radioactive water on the surface. So basically, that water got lifted off the Japan Trench and was flung right into the heart of Tokyo, the <laughs> Okutama, you know, Tokyo Bay, the Okutama yeah. uh, uh, River Basin, which is the main source of Japan's drinking water. So basically... Tokyo was inundated with radioactive water, you know, right off the trench. They're highly radioactive. Well, you know, these rivers, these, the, the, the other thing, Yochi, before you go on, is the rivers that have uh, mm-hmm. overflown their banks. The muck in the bottom of the rivers yeah. is loaded with radioactivity. We know that. Absolutely. From 
those first, yeah, the first months of the Fukushima uh, yeah. disaster there, this tremendous amount of sediment that's heavily radioactive, all that stuff got lifted out. And it's not only that your homes, uh, people's homes were hit in all that playground schoolyard, but also you see all the areas of rice growing, fruit growing, grape growing, and so on. You see all of those that areas swept over by radioactive water, either from the rivers, the overflowing rivers and streams, uh, but also this extra layer that came in with the rain, you know, the precipitation. And as everything starts to dry up, you'll see the concentrations rising, okay? you see the concentrations rising all over the Kanto Plain. There was also a second uh, typhoon out there called Kilo, which did not get reported, swept over the northern part of Japan. So Fukushima area was hit by two typhoons, actually. And, um, of course, the plant was very much flooded, and uh, they had to have this Curion, this uh, company that's based in Irvine, uh, California, yeah. but has its yeah. origin in the Hanford Google plant, making the statement, they, well, they are going to pour 800 tons of cleaned, of cleansed water, purified water uh, that they uh, use. To, well, let's see them drink some of it. Up. Let's see them bathe in it. You know, and I know there's over 200 you know, radionuclides yeah, in the water, and, and they might have pulled in four or five out. Yeah, they're going to try to dilute the massive concentrations of radioactive. Uh, that's water. great. Point out that, you know, stuff from the typhoon that's working its way through the plant into the sea. They'll try to dilute it to hold down the figures. That's all that, that's all that claim was all about. So <laughs> basically, this is a very cyclical system we're having here. You know, out of Fukushima, radiation comes back into Japan, which you can see in the strange colored clouds over the, the uh, Japan trench, and you can see them coming. Yeah. Down. Are they, they're right. still there? And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, there's this like a permanent cloud band out there. It just won't go. Uh, it's a cyclical system. You see, it's constantly fed by Fukushima. Yeah. And now it's sort of a rotating system. It's one small rotating system. The other is a larger wheel, which goes all the way, of course, to uh, 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 the North Pacific Current, you know, splits you know, part of it that goes to Alaska, uh -huh. and part down the California Current, causing it to fill up. That's a, and then coming back to Asia, let's say, off the coast of Mexico, you know, Central America, it comes back toward the Philippines, causing these storms to be so powerful, like that's how, you know, forming where it did, a very unusual place where it, it formed, uh, fairly uh, north of a uh, normal uh, typhoon form, meaning the water is superheated. This is all radioactive water circling around, causing massive storms, but returning radiation to land, you know, when these, these clouds form. Uh, storms uh, hit, and, and this is a bad news for California, too. You know, they said, well, the drought's soon going to be over. There's going to be a so-called El Nino event. It's actually a Fukushima event off the coast of California and Mexico. That water will be radioactive as it comes in. And then the same problem is going to hit the reservoirs, the water supply, the farms, uh, enter the food chain, and then as it dries up, concentration is going to build up. So basically... Um, this whole precipitation, you know, uh, these precipitation systems are deadly. You know, we normally welcome rain, but uh, we can't now. Well, every, you know, it is probably arguably a drought is preferable to the rain because, uh, you know, the rain will bring in permanent, you know, levels of sea and strong and, you know, very, very high levels of sea and strong. Everyone's backyard, rooftops. Well, I, I was trying to explain to somebody in the bank today about this that uh, it, the, the drought was uh, elective. It was caused, and they didn't want the radiation yeah. to, to pollute the Central Valley. Uh, however, it doesn't yeah. mean it isn't getting in here. It's just getting in here more slowly, that's all. Yeah, well, they're, they're seeing this huge pressure build up off the shore, you know, yeah. and this whole vast belt of fog building up of your superheated water. So they are predicting uh, major flooding events coming to the American West. Uh, These yes. are going to be very dangerous floods. And yeah. I would tell people, yeah. don't go out, you know, stay indoors and uh, cover, like uh, you had suggested from the beginning, cover your, your garden, you know. Cover oh, your garden. my God, you've got to. If you, don't, if you don't have your garden covered, folks, please. And I can't remember the name of the company. I think it's Oregon Valley Greenhouses. Those are the people I worked with. They have steel, round, half circle mm -hmm. tubes, and you know, every 10 feet, yeah. and you put them in the ground in yeah. concrete, and then you cover it with plastic, and you, they've got ends for it with doors. You can put a door on it, uh, and it will save your life. 
Save your life. If you yeah, don't believe yeah. me, get your radiator. Get, get, get your radioactive uh, uh, detector. Get your inspector plus. Go out and check the ground. And then go over to your downspout at your house, right where the water from the roof goes, and check that soil and be prepared to be shocked. Yeah. Or go into your house yeah. and to the return air filter and check that against the normal CPM in your house, which is probably 36, 38, yeah. maybe. Uh, check the check. Mine was a hundred and what was it? A hundred and thirty something, Yochi. And my filter, and I just threw it out. Yeah. I, it's just sucking out yeah, of the yeah, air. Yeah, yeah, you got a uh, filter of the air. Uh, absolutely. For the part of, you know, the particulates, the small particles of radioactive cesium. And, and, and let's face it, you know, uh, the Pacific is bringing in particles of plutonium that uh, surprisingly float. One of the heaviest of all metals actually floats because of the surface tension of the water and the heat that it generates keeps it afloat. Good stuff gets picked up by these storms and this coming so-called, so-called Nino event, the Fukushima event, which is going to hit the West Coast and is going to bring in tons and tons of radioactive particulates over the West Coast. So you got to filter the air, especially not only a storm brings it in, but the day after the storm realizes the evaporation is happening, things are going to start you know, evaporating and condensing. There'll be stuff in the atmosphere, you know, uh, rising up through the atmosphere, and it'll yeah. be entering your air supply, but you've got to protect yourself against this coming storm. Is this, uh, one, well, one guy the other day uh, was asking me, uh, another mm -hmm. person, uh, why why isn't the government holding news conferences if, if you're right? Why aren't they telling us? And we're going to go through this break, uh, Todd, thank you. Why isn't the government telling us? And what do you tell people like that? My God, if the, if the guy doesn't the know the government lies, the, the government isn't our government. It's the government of and by and for the corporatocracy. They don't, we're nothing. We don't mean anything to the government. Nothing. And above all the banks, you know, who's got the biggest stake in real estate? Not the homeowner, right? Not the landowner, no. not the farmer. No. It's the banks. We do the lending. And, of course, the entire banking structure would collapse if they admit what's going on, you know, what's going on on top of that land and under the land with radioactive you know, poisoning uh, spreading like crazy. The banks would be gone. This would make the Wall Street crisis look very small when they when they have to admit what is going on when, when it's too late, when it's basically too late. Did you get the, did you get the, did, did you get the story I sent you about that wild pig in California? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The blue, the blue energy. Yeah, what's yeah, that? The, the pig eats something that made it do blue, or was that something no, else? No, it's a hemoglobin. Uh, your, 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 basically, your body is, you know, the, your, the, your flesh is pink or red in certain animals like beef because of the high levels of hemoglobin. So the hemoglobin is obviously under attack. The pig is probably suffering from serious bone marrow cancer. Ah, so yes. That, uh, you ah, know, yes. his red blood cells are basically being knocked out. Um, the ability to carry oxygen, probably, been a, probably it was an easy pig to shoot but, because it was probably very slow moving on his last leg. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and probably desperate for food and all that, so it had to come down. You know, it lacked, probably lacked the strength to stay in the forest and forage yeah. for itself, so it was looking to eat garbage. And well, you, garbage. you watch there. Uh, then, but it's basically. All the animals, yeah, deer, the basically. same thing. You're going to see the deer. In the next few years, it's all all the radiation's gone into the ground, into the soil. It comes up in the yeah. crops, comes up in the grasses. It's yeah. they eat it. It accumulates. They don't. They can't mm -hmm. discharge it. Yeah. No way. No way. Yeah, and and, and the pig, you know, it stores a lot of fat. So this is, uh, you know, it had the whole summer to feed, but it fed on radioactive crop. But at least it has a storage of fat, which may able to keep going. Human being, of course, would have collapsed long ago. We just don't have that thing. Uh, you know, the same kind of a uh, body strength that a, uh, that an animal like that would have. Right. So right. we're seeing like uh, pigs with cancer now, wild pigs with cancer. We're seeing birds dropping out in the sky. You know, uh, whales keeling. Uh, you know, seals are gone. Uh, salmon, salmon, another. You know, that they they also have hemoglobin. Salmon wiped out. You know, one, one of the first to go. Salmon are wiped uh -oh. out. We haven't had one orca baby whale live beyond a year in the last four and a half years. Uh -huh. They all die. Yeah. And this is from the orca scientists who still will not say the R word. They will not say radiation. 
They're going to go to their graves denying it. Well, the problem is all the grants come from major corporations, or more, actually most of it comes from the federal government. And as long as the federal government wants to play this let's pretend game, yeah. they're going to threaten any scientist who dares to talk. And of course, department head, uh, you know, whole departments would go down, you know, chemistry, marine biology department. The federal government won't spare anybody, obviously. One who, who? Yeah, who? Uh, uh, faculty is out of line. Everyone there will get cut down. They will lose their funding. Uh, and so yeah. they don't dare yeah. step out of line. It's, it's, it's unfortunately not a very free scientific system. You know, it looks more like a Soviet style system that rules the science. Well, in, it does. Uh, in the United yeah. States. You know, where state about that. system yeah. completely dominates the science and you don't have the kind of freedoms that the scientists used to have. You know, people like Ben Franklin, Bob Watt, right. all the, you know, the great, uh, the, the great scientists of the past, they basically, you know, uh, they, they earned their own pay or they had patrons who let them do what they wanted to do. Yes. Uh, whatever yes. the, uh, whatever yeah. the findings were. Not, that's not true today. The R word is banned. The government doesn't want to face the radiation. And behind the government, of course, are the big banks, the Federal Reserve and all the large banks, brokerages, hedge funds, who don't want to see a collapse of the property market in America, which is probably some of the richest property. You know, as, as a large area, you know, it would, uh, it, of course, it's far greater than something even like a rich country like Switzerland pales in comparison with yeah. the U.S. West, uh, West Coast. You know? What are we going to rename the Olympics, the uh, Half-Life Olympics? Uh, no the pun intended. Olympics, yeah, that would be no life. Yeah, exactly, the half-life, no life. These kids are doomed. Tokyo Bay, all this radiation from the trench now is covering that part of Japan. It's all going to wash down to Tokyo Bay. All those bags of radioactive waste, okay? <laughs> all yeah. All oh, radioactive man. waste that was just dumped in the countryside, yeah. all washing down into Tokyo Bay and offshore of Tokyo. The... Uh, It'll be a, the Olympics will be a massacre, guaranteed to be a massacre of young athletes you know, and their fans. Their They're not going to, they won't die it'll, on it'll site. Be a, a games of death, basically games of death. It'll just be a huge festival of poisoning. And games of young death. People, uh, permanent DNA damage to all those young people there and the spectators. Yeah, and, uh, you know, the government isn't, isn't flinching. It's not going, it's not going to admit the Tokyo government cannot bear the cost. Tokyo's going broke. You see Japanese companies, you know, the Japanese population in Thailand yeah. has just, you know, is booming now. Every, you know, every small and large company can get next to free money from the Bank of Japan under Abenomics. They don't invest it in Japan. They take it to places like Thailand where, you know, vast swaths of Bangkok now are Japanese, basically are filled with Japanese businesses, you know, huge areas of Bangkok now. All over Thailand, you know, new factories are coming up. So, the, you know, the people who have any sense, the, the, the engineers, you know, the technocrats in Japan, they're, they're, they've long ago pulled out. They're, they're out. You know, they don't spend much time in Japan anymore. They live abroad. Uh, they know what's happening, and they're just going to milk the situation to the very end in Japan. You know, they're not very patriotic people, despite this ultra-conservative nationalism. They're not patriotic at all. They could care less about that in Japan. They're going to flee to save themselves. Save their profit. And as long as they get free money, they're going to continue going, you know. So from the Bank of Japan, they're just going to continue, uh, you know, pouring out of there. And Japan will be a shell of its own. Time. And, and in places like Naraha, you know, where the Japanese government just opened, oh, I did reports on this two years ago. I was there in Naraha when it was still closed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I showed, I showed, I think I showed you uh, uh, photos and I mentioned that. Two football sized fields of these vast tanks where they store radioactive waste. Yeah. And a uh, water leaks through and it's allowed to leak out right onto the foothills. Of course. There. And of course. Uh, when you cross this place, there's a, there's a road, major roadway into the places they want people to resettle. The radiation levels just skyrocket. Yeah, they just skyrocket through there. And then, and so basically, people, anyone who lives in this sort of town, they may clean the house. But driving in and out, walking in and out, bicycling in and out, it was just deadly. You know, there's no chance of survival. And whenever right. it rains like this typhoon, it's, it's built on the slope. There's mountains above it. All that radiation, there's high levels of radiation all the way to the top of those hills. Okay. Uh, it washes down with every rain. So yeah. it, it's a death trap, and the government wants to get people off of the welfare rolls. They don't want to pay uh, emergency support for these people.
people anymore. So it says move back. Right. It's safe. It's not safe at all. It's, it's not safe in the least. No way. Uh, no, no, no. I'll, not at yeah. all. Now, as soon as you step out your door, take a few steps, it's deadly. It's very hilly. And as I say, wherever you have a choke point, a road passing, let's say, through a cleft in the, in the hill, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, that's what radiation is. It's like an oven. You know, it's like an oven there where the radiation buildup is extremely uh, strong whenever you have an enclosed space. So. Yeah. Not too many people are moving back. That's one thing. No, they know no, they're they not. Visit. They know. The There's 77,000 still the stuck area. in uh, temporary housing. Mm-hmm. Four and a half years later. I want to thank, uh, if I may, uh, I want to thank Bob Nichols, a journalist friend who has uh, been putting out this series called Your Radiation This Week, and Mm -hmm. it's number 21. Uh, Let me just run down this so you can see it at the top center column Mm -hmm. at Rents. Look for it. It's Your Radiation This Week. Number 21. It's very important to understand what Bob is doing. What he's doing is reporting to you the counts per minute, CPM. Uh, each is a little uh, nuclear reaction in and of itself, a little tiny. Uh, and these counts per minute, uh, if you get over 100 in California, they call in a hazmat team, uh, cordon off the area, and start looking for where the source is. They view it as a potentially great Disaster. Now, here are the counts. I'm going to read a few of these for you. Uh, for now, you people who live in the mid, Midwest and think you're safe, there's something called the jet stream. You got to you have to understand that it, it it goes up north over Canada, carries all that stuff right down the Midwest. So the counts per minute in Billings, Montana, two thousand three hundred and twenty three. Counts per minute in insane. Billings, Montana. That is insane. Huh? Yeah, insane. Yeah, and that's insane, uh, yeah. uh, 464 times normal. Over, over normal. Uh, Fort Wayne, yeah. Indiana, 1,913 counts per minute. 382 times over normal. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 1,508 counts per minute. 301 times per normal. San Diego, California. Oh, we're safe down here in San Diego, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. 1,435 counts per minute, 287 times over normal. Portland, Maine. We're safe in Maine, aren't we? That's clear across the country. 1,431 counts per minute, 286 times over normal, of normal. Um, let me find some more here. Miami, Florida. Oh, we got to be safe in Miami, right? Way now, we're way out of the way, aren't we? Near the tropics, one thousand three hundred and fifty-nine counts per minute were measured, two hundred and seventy-one times over normal. Same for Kansas City, uh, Aberdeen, South Dakota, Concord, New Hampshire, Atlanta, Georgia. 1,028 counts per minute in Atlanta, uh, Boston, Massachusetts, 997. So there you go, all right? Understand, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Get yourself a HEPA filter. Make sure your windows are airtight. Uh, try and take your shoes off outside. If you've got a pet, you're going to have to try and wipe your pet's feet off. But at least vacuum and buy yourself a vacuum that uh, has an external exhaust on the house, okay? Don't buy one that has a bag and you push it around because it comes right out the bag. I know they say HEPA filters, but just get one that vents outside. They're a little more expensive. Uh, uh, Breen, Breen, Breen makes them? I think it's Breen anyway. Uh, they're superior vacuums. So you've got all over the country, I've just given you a perfect example, thanks to Bob Nichols, of how the counts per minute continue to be sky high. They haven't slowed down any. It's just unbelievable. All right, hold on. Yochi, well, can you... Well, you know, it's, it's the season now. You know, uh, as, as uh, Don, Donald Trump is showing, the season now where candidates are coming out of the woods here to try to make their bid. To yeah, be yeah. Uh, wherever you are, if they're visiting your town, I think you should just raise your hand, stand up, and ask them what their position on nuclear is. Uh, you know, if it's the United States. <laughs> In nuclear and just show yeah. those figures. Oh, exactly. you know, we're 200 times over 
of safe limit radioactivity since Fukushima. The local nuclear plants are leaking. Uh, you know, what are you going to do if you're president to stop this? To stop this because it's rising rapidly. And by the time you're elected president, it's going to be higher. By the time you're out of office, it's, it's going to be even more deadly. What are you going to do to stop that? I think people got to, you know, confront these candidates wherever they are. Let them know. You know, you're yeah. not going to take it. You know, you're not going to take Let them know the that we're not endorsement stupid. of a yeah. deadly technology. Okay. Mm-hmm. It just, that's going to be their needs. They have to be confronted wherever they are. They realize that there is a uh, groundswell of people, especially parents, concerned about uh, how the country is not doing anything. Or how the, you know, the United States is a world leader is doing nothing to stop nuclear power, and it continues to promote it. And uh, despite the lessons of Fukushima and Chernobyl, it continues on and on. And uh, it's got to stop. we got a new plant coming up in Georgia. Which is sort of lead the way. It started. It's giving endorsement for the rest of the world, from Iran to India, to build more nuclear plants. You can't afford this. Yeah, this is. It's going to be. It is the end of life in the North Pacific. It's going to be the end of all life on Earth if this continues. And uh, you know, it's up to the electorate to confront these people and say, "If you know, support to shut down nuclear power, don't have my vote. Just um, walk out. You say, walk out, walk out. Just tell me, you know, we ain't voting for you. That's all." You got to do something while they're weak. And by the time they're in office, uh, you know they're going right. to, uh, you know, be a thousand percent by time. So you got to get them. And there's a condition for going to the office. You're going to start shutting down this power. Yeah. This is a, you know, this is a campaign season. It's going to last. So uh, people got to use, uh, you know, use the political angle now. Because uh, situation is serious. As, as these figures suggest, it's, it's rising dramatically. You know, in the uh, I think the last few months, radiation levels. Oh, yeah. And they had the flood. We, uh, yeah. I think, let me catch the tail end of this break. We'll come right back. I tried to get Dana. Mm-hmm. Uh, Richard, uh, mm-hmm. Rich Wilcox is not available. So can you hang in here for one more segment? We're almost okay. done. Hang on. We'll be back. Okay. Okay. Welcome back. This program is made possible by a small number of very dedicated sponsors who care about you and who care about this country and this planet. And I, I kid you not, I've got my uh, life change tea right here. I've got my, I, here's an, right here. There's the bio superfood right here. Take it right during the program sometimes. I use these products. And you go to the New Earth section, every one of those products I use and I own. I will not push something I do not use and have not tested. And these are all absolutely superior products. The Life Change Tea has just by itself made me feel much healthier and much better. And I would urge you just to try a couple of months worth. Uh, Ronnie McMullen has a program on here. It's his product. And it is, it is sensational. So there are things you can do to keep your body clean and help it fight off this radiation. But I guarantee you, if you continue to eat the American diet, you are going to die younger by far than you should have. Because your immune system has to actually fight the food you eat because it is so full of toxins. Now, if you're an athlete... Um, more power to you. That's another wonderful way to keep your body relatively free of toxins and toxicity. toxicity. But you've got to eat. You are what you eat, folks. You've got to eat right the right stuff. I, I drink this tea all day long, and I have the bio superfood and, uh, and, and my supplements. You know, I've got a nutrition drink with hemp protein powder and all that. Are you there, Yochi, or do we lose you again? Ah, oh, darn it, we lost him. Okay. Now, uh, these products are all on the home page, or just look for the New Earth section, and you will be fully informed. Uh, it's, it's, it's crucial. Now, let me find that story I wanted to read to you. Ah, oh, doggone it. Hold on just a second, please. And I will find it, and I will pull it up. And then we can have some discussion. Um, God, this... Bernie Sanders, I mean, everybody has a past, but his past is, yeah. I got it up in the splash section on the home page. You'll see it right there. All right, let's see. Now, where is that story? Ah, okay. Oh, I wanted to ask Yochi about the flooding and the danger to the buildings. 
Now, some of the buildings at Fukushima Daiichi are already subsiding into the muck that the ground is. Uh, building four, 31 inches on one, I think the northwest side, it has sunk into the ground. They built the whole plant on fill, toxic fill. It's toxic now, anyway. Um, another worker died last week. Uh, media blackout on that. Uh, the, uh, the flooding, though, is the big deal. 82 bags of radioactive materials washed away by the typhoon. All right? Who opens a reactor next to a volcano? Read these. Understand them. And then at the bottom, if you want to read more, you can just hit that. All Fukushima stories uh, are in the uh, top right column. And then there's a huge archive after that. We've covered the whole thing. All right, he's back. You back? Right. Okay. Okay, so... The flooding, Yochi, the flooding and the buildings potentially going to fall over. Mm -hmm. What about it? Again, can you say that again? Have you heard much about, have you heard much about the flooding and permeating the ground with so much water that the buildings are becoming more, uh, they're leaning more. We know building four was 31 inches on the north or northwest yeah. corner. Yeah. Well, they, they stopped talking about the frozen wall. You know, I mean, they, <laughs> the uh, popsicle, the great experiment. popsicle. Yeah. yeah uh, so they, this is pretty warm water that came off the trench. It's, really, it's it got higher levels of radioactivity. So it's going to destabilize the ground because of, it's not only the water. It's unfreezable. It's radioactive. There's no yeah. way they're going to freeze yeah. it. So, yeah, the destabilization has been going on. They made the wall actually contributes to the destabilization because they removed all that gravel and then dumped it by north, uh, north of the And the gravel made, allows uh, for uh, drainage. The sea. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the gravel also uh, provides a the, the little bit of stability to the soil. But what they got is the huge trenches now that are collapsing in, into themselves. And obviously, uh, the, the whole ground is, is destabilized. I think, I think right now no one is contesting the fact that the thorium has escaped. It's in the ground. Radiation levels have been rising out of the groundwater out of Fukushima. The fishermen have basically given up. They just realized. It's never, you know, the fishing industry is never going to recover. A lot of boats have been moved to other ports. They go further out to sea to the south to try to uh, keep themselves, uh, because you just can't, uh, fish there in the Fukushima area. The radiation levels are just rise, continue to rise incredibly. Uh, tritium, much more tritium in the water means underground reactions. And yeah, you know, uh, you know uh, fishing is going on underground. So, you know, the ground is uh, absolutely not just water, but also highly radioactive water, increasing levels of hot, hot water. Re- remember about a space. year ago mm-hmm. when they said you could mm-hmm. take a shovel and uh, almost anywhere yeah. on the property and dig a spadeful of earth up, and after a few minutes there would be water collecting in it. That's it'll, how yeah, bad a puddle, it is. A puddle will form, yeah. The yeah. Water, yeah it, they made a huge mistake of not building this thing on rock. There was rock there on that cliff face, but they, they you know, dynamited it out, moved it out, uh, and then replaced it with gravel to make construction of the plant easier, you know, much easier for them to, you know, just uh, load the plant in and fill with gravel. A little bit of cement slurry toward the top. So that, that, the basic design of the plant, the foundation of the plant isn't there, you know, isn't there. This would not be allowable for an office tower, for example, but they did it with a nuclear plant, which is right next to the ocean. That's the, uh, uh, GE, the GE Hitachi, that's the General Electric Hitachi plant, correct? That's right. That's right. The original plan was General Electric Design, Hitachi. Uh, so basically, and the other problem is they built it atop uh, underground streams. You know? So there's those, uh, the water pressure from this storm, the, the danger from this light, latest typhoon is not over yet by any means because you have this massive water pressure coming off the Abukuma Plateau and running through underground streams, which is going to further take more of that gravel out, you know, start pushing it out into mm-hmm. the sea. Yeah. And into so uh, offshore. So basically, this space is opening up, you know, inexorably, and um, 
And all the delay, you know, basically the failure of the ice wall means they don't have now a plan to stabilize it. So there's nothing they can do right now for several years until they can figure out something else. So diversionary channel for the water overwhelmed, obviously. You know, there were some visuals from Fukushima. It, looked, it, it just looks like a series of pools, muddy pools all over. You know, a lot of equipment is covered up. So it's pretty, uh, it, it was, again, both typhoons started Fukushima, you know, uh, that's how it uh, hit it pretty hard. And then Kilo also affected. And then, then there's been a, a sort of a backwash storm also yesterday uh, from the bearings, bringing more of that radiation from Fukushima back into Fukushima area. So, you know, it's waterlogged. And this is uh, still, you know, the, the typhoon season doesn't end until, you know, maybe November. You know, we still have another couple of months left to go. Sure. So, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, and the water is at record heat heat levels in the Pacific because of the Fukushima radiation. What happens when... do with El Nino. No, and there's no. no natural El Nino involved. This is just no. radioactive water. You know, and, and also particles, you know, pieces of fuel rod down in the trench itself. They're just boiling the water. Inside now, the now, remember so, the, yeah, the, this the, is a, this is totally artificial. Mm-hmm. the pieces of the fuel assemblies, which have broken off and melted down and gone down through mm-hmm. the concrete and steel containment mm-hmm. into the ground are down. I know a year ago, the wells, the test wells were picking up, uh, radiation mm-hmm. of 75 feet deep. You can't uh, go down there and yeah. dig that stuff up. What do you dig it no, up with no, your no, 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 bare no, hands? Ridiculous. There's no, there's no technology yeah. that exists to yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The plant, you know, not until the plant's dismantled, if they ever be able to dismantle it because of high level of They haven't figured out how. Even the robots, every they robot can't they go use, in there. They the, lose their yeah, robots. The, yeah, the servo motors, yeah, the motors burn, switches burn out. When the video cams burn out, everything just burns out. The radiation levels are much too high. So electronics fail to work. Therefore, robots fail to work. They have, they have no solutions. They have no solutions. Uh, they, this uh, whole Curion system of trying to clean up the water is just a pure PR. Uh, is that that's just purely for PR purposes, right. and maybe to dilute the you know the the, the most heavily irradiated water to to try to dilute that someone somewhat while they're taking measurements. You know whether. So Dude, it, I, I I found I found a. I found a map, Yocha, before we run out of time. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I sent it to mm-hmm. you. The Woods Hole, all their mm-hmm. stations for measuring along the Pacific. Did I send you that? They have measuring stations yeah. all over the Pacific coast and out into mm-hmm. the ocean, and they're not telling us yeah. anything about what they're finding. Nothing. Absolutely not. All we know is that this Ken Buesler is getting more pessimistic. You know, the, the, oh, is the, he? <laughs> uh, the, the kelp report has never come out because, you know, bioaccumulation, they don't, you know, that, that's something they don't dare release now. You know, their own Too findings, late. which yeah. are already watered down, controlled and all that. Yeah. So, uh, I'm sure the findings are, are alarming, even in the most controlled places. Okay. Yep. So, uh, and he's taken out much more. He's in charge of the cover up, but he's taking a much more pessimistic tone of, you know, as he goes along. And so he's pulling his punches, but he's still very pessimistic and then seeing worse to come. Wow. Amazing. All right, my friend, thank you for being here. On the nuclear industry side, they're they're pessimistic. That's right, and they're they're beginning to show it. So if they're pessimistic and we see it. We're going to see it live. All right. Your liability is the next thing. government is liable. All the big uh, power companies are liable. Yes, they the are. Industry is liable. Yes, the they are. are liable. They're uh-huh. all liable for what they've done for supporting this insane form of technology that is now backfired upon us. There is no reason for nuclear power. None. Zero. In fact, there are a thousand yeah. reasons against it. And it doesn't exactly. turn a profit exactly. for anybody. It costs the customers more exactly. money? In the end, no. No. It's an idiot dream. It's an idiotic science. It is a fake science. It is, yeah. a, you know, it's everything that science is not supposed to be. And so much of our science is so distorted. The chemical industry, the pesticide, the GMO, everything. You know, science has been deeply perverted. And, Everything uh, that science is, is yeah, yeah, you got it beautifully yeah. said. When life was so much easier before, you know, it was so much easier. Without so all simple, stuff, without and it worked, worked beautifully. Yeah. We didn't need it. 
That's yeah, horrible. all you have to do is apply yourself and work hard and, you know, do a day's yeah. labor and, you know, you have the fruits of the earth. Now we've lost everything. Yeah. Glad you're right. Yochi, I'll see We're you here. next week. Uh, you take care of yourself. We are not the stewards. Yeah. Yes, we're not the stewards of the earth. We're the killers. Yeah. We are. We're we killing in, ourselves. We infest we the planet ourselves. like viruses. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Next week. Talk weekend. soon. All righty. Night. The heroic man is wonderful. Just wonderful. Okay. Uh, we will be back. Long day today. Wow. Yours truly is going to try and get some sleep tonight. Got to do the news, and then we'll be right back with you in the morning. And we will do it again tomorrow. So you take good care and think about these things. We're not telling you in any way what to think. We're asking you simply to engage in the process and make your own decisions. But we're trying to bring you information that nobody else will bring you. All right. Thank you again for being here. We'll talk soon.